Welcome everyone to Milwaukee Day. Welcome to Palm Sunday. Joe, you want to bless them with the palm there? And uh, welcome also to the 31st anniversary of the best in the world. Here you go. Wow. Well, you can wave it around. Or yeah. Yeah. Glad to be here. We are in a fairly hallowed, hallowed hall. Hallowed ball right now. Uh, it's got a little bit of a history because you got to realize back in the early days before uh, there were things like social security and uh, insurance companies and uh, whatnot, you had uh, social organizations that would tend to take care of their ethnic groups. So the Germans had the Turners, for example, and uh, the Italians had the Garibaldi Society and uh, the Polish. Uh, had uh, the uh, the Falcon, the Falcon Bulls, uh, the Falcon Turner. So uh, we are in the hall of the third one that was ever created in the United States. And wow. um, it's been around for a while. Actually, the bar area was constructed in 1887. So oh that, that puts it back a little while. One of the first structures in the area, which is also kind of common because you built the bar first, then you built the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> the bar served as the, the meeting place. So, yeah, right. You know, and then uh, you could supply the workers with beer. That's where the the growler came about, and the, the beer boys that would run back and forth. So, um, when they're laying the bricks in the road, they had something to drink. Um, this section that we're in was from 1898 that it was built. And we are in a very historic building, too, in that the, the bowling alley, which is underneath here, was uh, certified in 1917, and that makes it the sixth oldest certified blades. And I know there's some controversy as far as whether they're fifth or sixth or whatever, fourth, but uh, it's an old one down there. So uh, there was a little misfortune that happened due to the bad winter that we had, where there was a roof leak. And some of the water ended up coming down and it destroyed the lanes downstairs. So uh, we were kind of thinking about having this as a fundraiser for the, the Falcon Bowl and trying to help get Lynn back on her feet. But in uh, kind of talking to Lynn in the front, she doesn't want any more. She's, uh, she's pretty uh, stubborn in that way. And so what I would encourage everyone here to help Lynn out is go next door and have a cocktail or two. And, you know, throw some money across the bar. It's, you know, she's been putting out this place for uh, social events and weddings and funerals and uh, usually at a good price and blessing of the box and whatever. So she deserves a little consideration at the end. So, um, with that in mind, uh, this is number 31. So I, I, there is quite a history with uh, uh, the, the church and drinking beer and uh, I just want to go through some of the uh, the previous uh, um, things I was able to get from the Bible um, and from uh, literature uh, St. Columbus who uh, gave us this gen of a beer lovers blessing it is my desire to die in the brew house let ale be placed into my mouth when I am expiring, so that when the choir of angels come, they may say, Be God prophetess to this drinker. Um, Do not drink water. Drink beer, warned St. Arnold the Metz. Uh, probably one of the, the best known Irish saints after St. Uh, Patrick is St. Bridget. And she worked in a leper colony. And the leper colony found itself without beer. And so she worked the water, uh, or she worked the bath water. She did a miracle with the bath water, turning it into beer. And apparently it was very, very good. Wow. So that visiting clerics would have something to drink. Obviously, this trade would have beer endear her to many a beer lover. A poem attributed to Bridget in the, the Brussels Library begins with the lines, 
I should like a great lake of ale for the King of Kings. I should like the family of heaven to be drinking it through time eternal. There's definitely a brewer there. Um, the New King James Version, Luke uh, chapter 7, verses 32 to 34. They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, saying, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We mourned to you, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say, He has a demon. However, the Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Look, a glutton and a wine-bibber, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. So. Even Jesus was known to have a few back then. Yeah. <laughs> Son of a uh, friend of tax keepers, so he take that in mind with uh, what's happening tomorrow. And one of my favorites here, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 14 and 18. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these people are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. <laughs> the third hour translates to about nine in the morning. <laughs> so apparently he's never been at a blessing of the box. <laughs> with that in mind, let's get into it. Let us pray. Lord, bless this creature beer, which by your kindness and power has been pro produced from kernels of grain, and let it be a healthful drink for mankind. Grant that whoever drinks it with thanksgiving to your holy name may find it a help in your in body and in soul. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 So let's go to it, gang. Yeah, man. Hey. 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 Happy 31. Cheers.